Hey everybody, this is Nick Carell with Audio Video Export. It's a pleasure to be able to have everybody with us today. Uh, with us, for those who are live, we've got on the screen Juan Pablo Garcia of Polaris Controls, who's a rep company uh, in charge of uh, the sales branch for Elia Professional. Yes, I said it correctly, it's Elia Professional. Um, but the guys over at Elia, they don't really mind if you call it Leo or other. Um, they're pretty minimal to that, so long as you're selling a good product, that's it, right? Uh, and with us also on the screen, we've got Scott Robbins, VP of Sales, and uh, just we've got a really amazing team, and I'm so excited uh, about continuing to be able to work um, with the guys over at Elia, and, and we've got a long-running relationship with players and, and the entire family over there, so those guys are not a sister company of ours, but sometimes it feels like a sister company of ours, because we work hand in glove, which is a, which is a great relationship. So. I don't want to take a whole lot of time uh, in the introductions. You know, Scott's going to be, uh, you know, giving our presentation today. For those of you who are um, watching this via YouTube, um, please do, if you have any questions, get in touch with me, Nick, N-I-C-K, at av-export.com. I'm happy to answer any questions it is that you might have. For those who are here live, there is a question box. Feel free to be able to, you know, ask any question that you've got. We should have a little bit of time afterwards. Um, but, you know, depending on the question, uh, I may interrupt Scott and we're able to go through it and, and, uh, and we're looking forward to it. Scott, Scott does a, a great job on that. Thank you so much for being here, both of you guys. Great. Thank you very much, Nick. I really appreciate it. And Juan Pablo, uh, our good partner um, from Polaris. Um, appreciate everybody joining us today. Um, I know that um, some of you are based in Florida and uh, we do hope that everybody survived the storms okay from last week it's a pretty terrible thing and um, so our thoughts are with you as you guys that are based in florida recover from all that um, so as nick mentioned i'm scott robbins um, the vp of sales for lea professional um, what i'm going to do today is just take you through a little bit of the background on our company um, give you some background on how we got started um, and then talk you through the product and uh, share a quick demo with you. Um, please interrupt. You know, this is a, uh, I don't know how many people are online with us, but I'm very happy to have you interrupt. Um, if we need help with any Spanish translation, um, Nick or Juan Pablo from Polaris can help jump in and, and uh, answer those questions. So please feel free to interrupt. We want this to be casual um, and hopefully fun and, uh, and mostly uh, informative. So. Um, I do appreciate Audio Video Export too as our, our distributor. Um, we're very happy to be associated with them and, and help bring LEA to your market. Um, so I'm gonna start with, uh, I'm gonna share my screen. Um, you should now see a um, my, my PowerPoint. Um, so LEA, just to give you some background, um, we're, our company was founded by former Crown executives and engineers. Uh, myself, personally, I spent 30 plus years with Crown, um, great company based here in northern Indiana, USA. We're not too far from Chicago. Um, I was the global VP of sales at Crown when Harman acquired the company in the year 2000. So I became part of the Harman family at that time. Um, enjoyed a lot of good years there. Uh, but then um, Harman elected to close the Crown facility here in northern Indiana. Uh, manufacturing was moved to Mexico and the engineering teams were, were basically re, re, uh, rebuilt or rehired in Shenzhen, China. And so um, while it's a sad time for a lot of people, around 650 people lost their job, um, it also sometimes when you're faced with adversity, something great can emerge out of that. And in our case, it was LEA. Um, so just to take you through some background, um, so we are, in fact, LEA. Um, it is stands for Loud Enough Audio. Um, we don't, uh, we don't. People call us Leah. We don't care at all. But officially, it's LEA Loud Enough Audio. Um, our logo is a shark fin. We've had a lot of fun building our brand. Um, we have distribution now set up in, I think, close to 100 countries around the world. We have very solid channels to market now established, and our brand has been growing rapidly. Um, while we came from Crown, we're not trying to be Crown. Um, we're really not trying to be any other amplifier company. Um, we, we didn't think the world needed another amplifier company. We really view ourselves as more of a technology company. We're developing technologies that haven't, haven't been seen before, 
Uh, we made a smart amp, but we also made a very quality product that's easy to use. And I'll cover that more when we get into the demo. But there are three things really that make us different. Number one is our people, especially our engineering team. Um, number two is our product, something we call the LEA what? And then the last thing is something we call the LEA way. It's just the way we do business. Uh, not only did we want to build a really great product, but we also wanted to build a great company in terms of how we interact with our customers and, and those kinds of things. So um, our founder is Blake Augsburger. Um, just quick background on him. Blake was the president of Crown in 2000. He was brought in shortly after the Harmon acquisition. He did a great job running Crown. We doubled the business. He was eventually promoted to be the president of all of Harmon Pro. Harmon Pro at that time was about a $500 million company. When he left in 2016, it was $1.1 billion. Blake was uh, semi-retired. And uh, he, when the announcement came out that the Crown facility was going to close, Blake put the business plan together and he founded the company. He is the sole owner. Um, I'd like to point out that, that uh, Blake is a sole owner. We have no private equity behind us. So there's no purse strings that are telling us what to do. Um, all the money that we make goes 100% back into our company, back into our roadmap, making operational improve improvements, hiring more people so that we continue to be a quality vendor and grow our business alongside of you. Um, so while our brand is relatively new, we officially launched in January 2019, our team is very experienced. Um, one guy I'll point uh, out to you here on this screen, Matt McLean. Uh, Matt is our VP of Finance and Administration. He's the one guy that's not from the audio industry, but he's an expert in startups and ERP implementation. Um, we run our entire company on Oracle NetSuite, which is an expensive um, ERP system designed for companies much bigger than ours, but we had made that investment so we can automate a lot of our, prop our, our processes and we can grow rapidly without adding a lot of people. And so uh, it's to Matt's credit that we have that kind of horsepower as a backbone that we run our company on. Uh, but really the, the, the secret to our success is these engineers, they're not all pictured here. We've ex actually expanded the team. Um, but we do have a very talented group. They have an average of 16 years of hardcore amplifier design experience. Everything that you need from a technical discipline is represented in our engineering team. Um, from uh, embedded firmware engineers, principal power electronics engineers who designs a power supply, mechanical engineers who design our chassis, test engineers who design all the test processes in manufacturing, um, so th that's the team and it's been fun to watch this team um, work because I worked alongside them for many years at Crown but when you remove big corporate encumbrances off of smart driven people um, you get some it, and allow them to invent and create something you get something really unique and cool which is our product which I'll, I'll show you in a little bit um, we didn't do it all by ourselves um, we do have uh, some outside people helping us. The, the one name that I'll draw your attention to on this screen is this company called Zollner. They are a German uh, aerospace and electronics manufacturing company. Um, they are a multi-billion dollar company. They have manufacturing facilities all over the world. They happen to have a world-class plant based in Costa Rica, which is in fact where LEA amplifiers are built. Um, we love this relationship because it's a it's a German aerospace and automotive electronics manufacturer. They understand quality. Um, also, being based in Costa Rica, it's a trade-free, duty-free relationship with the United States. And, and also, it's in our hemisphere. So a logistics standpoint is much easier for us than a lot of our competitors. It only takes us about a week to get product from our manufacturing facility in Costa Rica to our warehouse here in Northern Indiana. We are producing and shipping on average about 600 amps a week. And so the volume has, has grown tremendously. We could build, we could ship more if I could build more. Um, we are adding to our operational footprint. We'll be adding a third production line in Costa Rica next year. And we'll also be bringing on an Asian production partner to service our customers in Asia where the business is growing rapidly. So. Um, we do have some outside help to help us, um, which we're very thankful for. So uh, that's enough about us. So let me get right into the product here. Um, so we call it the Connect Series. Uh, the amplifiers, as of everything that we're shipping right now, 
they're all in these attractive one rack space packages. Um, we tried to make the amps look as good as they sound. They look really cool. They have a blue glowing shark fin logo on the front. Um, and and it's, you'll be proud to have something like this sitting in your rack. Um, out of the box, they are a great amplifier. They do what amplifiers are supposed to do. It makes little signals bigger, does it reliably, does it with excellent sound quality. We've never had anybody complain about the sound quality. Then we took a, a very good amplifier and we packaged it with a lot of features that you essentially get for free. It has a lot of onboard DSP for speaker processing or room equalization, it has fault monitoring on board, event monitoring. Um, they're all networkable. Um, and then we took all that technology and we harnessed it or packaged it around a really easy to use user interface, a web-based user interface. So uh, look, let's face it, all the technology in the world is useless if it's too difficult to implement, too difficult to integrate. Uh, and so we try to make it really simple to use with this web-based user interface. I so should point out. First question yeah. that came in, uh, they wanted to find out whether the UI, that user interface, um, if that's something that's uh, free or if there's a license payment for that, et cetera. It's a good, good question. It is it is 100% free. Um, there is no software to buy or download. You just have to connect to the amplifier once you're on the same network as the amp, you can connect to it and there's nothing you have to do. Now we are introducing a new software that'll be shipping here, I think in a matter of weeks. <clears throat> it's called Sharkware. It is also a free software, but you it is a, it, it lives on your laptop and it allows a lot of features that have been requested like offline editing. So you can configure an amplifier and create a, uh, a, a working JSON file without having an amp connected to your laptop. So it'll have that feature. It'll also offer grouping capabilities so you can link multiple amplifiers or channels together and control them all together. Um, user access levels and a lot of other nice features that our, our client base, as we've grown, we've, we've taken a lot of input on how we can improve the software and we've implemented those ideas into Shark, Sharkware um, which will be shipping here in a matter of weeks. So actually, now that you mentioned that, Scott, I've got a question because, well, number one, uh, is this then going to be a firmware that we need to update for amplifiers that are either in my warehouse or on a route? That'd be the first question. That's a good question. So the the amplifiers, there is a Linux operating system on board the amp. It's a computer. And so we do, from time to time, release new firmware updates. Uh, that unlock feature enhancements or performance improvements or and or bug fixes. So there are uh, firmware updates that will come along from time to time. Uh, I don't know if Sharkware itself will require a firmware update to access all its features. I'm not sure about that. But um, it is a good idea to always check for the latest firmware be prior to the installation just to make sure you have it. Um, it will have the latest firmware on it. We can tell you that. Okay, and then so the, the second question that I had was with regard to grouping. Is that only on the Dante enabled amplifiers and then they're being grouped via Dante or how are you doing that for the non-Dante enabled amplifiers? The grouping feature will be available on anything, Dante or non-Dante. You just have to have Sharkware um, software loaded and then you'll have the grouping feature, the uh, offline editing features, uh, the user access level um, features, all and and a, and a wide variety of other things that we've added to that. But it it does not it'll work on any model we make. Okay, good good questions. Um, so the uh, just to cover the range. So we start at 80 watts by four and eight channels, 160 watts by four and eight channels, 350 watts by two and four. 700 watts by two and four and then here shortly finally um, we'll be shipping our 1504 that'll be in a two rack space package but that'll be 1500 watts by four channel or it can be a 3000 by two or it can be a 3000 by one and a 1500 by two it's kind of a chameleon it can adapt to a, a, a lot of different use cases um, all of the features that i talk about 
are the same across the range. The only thing that changes is whether or not they have Dante on board or not. So if you see a D at the end of the model number, it just indicates that it is Dante enabled network card. I should point out here too that our target market is installation. That's really the, the feature set, the connection points, um, everything that we, we've built in terms of how the amplifier operates and its performance characteristics are designed for fixed installation. Whether it be custom home integration, um, uh, house of worship, restaurant retail, government projects, education, um, corporate projects, anything where an amplifier fixed installation. It's not that the amp's not rugged. Rugged, it is very rugged. UPS and FedEx prove that to us all the time because they beat the amplifiers up during shipping and they survived just fine. But but we did really optimize and and our, our design and the, the features for install uh, type application. Okay, so just to cover some of the features high level here, so uh, before I get into the demo, so the amplifiers are capable of driving any load out of the box, whether it be a directly coupled speaker or a 70 volt distributed speaker line. Uh, furthermore, all the channels are independent of each other. So uh, let's say you have a rest, I'll just use a restaurant example where you have maybe distributed speakers throughout a dining area that are on 70 volt load. And then maybe you have a directly coupled left and right speaker above a bar area to give you more foreground you know, music. And then maybe there's a subwoofer over in the corner somewhere augmenting the low frequency response in that whole space. So one four channel amp can do all of that without anything external to buy or anything else. The amp can drive all those different kinds of loads out of the box. So it makes it very versatile. Additionally, we do bridging differently. I know there's a lot of people on the call, including our friends at uh, Audio Video Export and Polaris. You guys understand traditional bridging where you take a two channel amplifier, you physically or mechanically combine those channels, you make it a one channel amp, but then the, the benefit is you get double power now that you can drive into a load. So we use something, we, we have a proprietary uh, technology called Smart Power Bridge. So what that enables is you can get double power out of any one channel, doesn't matter, you pick which channel you want, you'll get double power out, but you will not sacrifice any of the other channels and lose power on the other channels. So in that example I gave you before, channel one driving a 70 volt distributed line in a speaker or in a restaurant, channels two and three driving a left right pair of speakers over the bar area, Maybe channel four, you've got a subwoofer, that subwoofer requires more power. So you can take channel four, engage smart power bridge, you'll get double power now out of that channel, but you still didn't sacrifice or lose any of the other zones or power from those zones. So we get challenged on that sometimes. People is like, well, how is that possible? And it's kind of an elegantly simple solution. Um, the, the, the answer is all of the amplifiers are capable of producing twice their rated power. So the headroom is built into every single output stage to, to produce twice its rated power. And then we built in an oversized power supply. So all that happens when you engage smart power bridges, we open up the limiter settings on that particular channel to allow more voltage and current to flow and thereby create more power. So it's just the simple answer is it's headroom. Um, the other thing is we have power factor correction on board. Power factor correction is what gives its amp its efficiency. Um, it is not a technology that's unique to us. A lot of amplifier designs use power factor correction, but we use an advanced interleaved PFC design. So it's maximum efficient, but it doesn't produce harmonic distortion. If you're using a standard PFC power supply, it will induce some harmonic distortion in the signal path. Um, our DNA at LEA is we, we are we want the signal to be pure. The amplifier needs to faithfully reproduce whatever is coming into it without coloration, without distortion. So we use an advanced interleave PFC design. There's white papers written on it. Um, look up IPFC on the internet. You'll find it if you want to. If you're bored and want to get sleepy, <laughs> read that white paper. It'll explain it. Uh, lots of onboard DSP. Uh, fault and event monitoring, load monitoring, I'll explain all that. It's easier to do that when I show you the demo of the amp itself. 
Uh, while you were talking about the advanced PFC, I just want our, our dealers to know, not to add anything to what you're doing, what you're talking about there, but I want to make sure that our dealers are clear that this is not a substitute or replacement for a good Furman device that, that these uh, LDF products are, are connected to. Um, it's not one or the other, it's most definitely both because they do different jobs within, uh, within the system. You're absolutely correct. Absolutely correct. Um, our DSP is is really the most common use case is the speaker tuning processing, and then you use your outboard DSP for, for everything you just described, Nick. You know, onboard or uh, room equalization, um, delay, all those kinds of things. But we do have enough DSP horsepower to do speaker tuning processing, and then if you want to do some basic room EQ, but you're right, it's not a substitute for external DSP. That's it's not. It's not designed for that. I, I was talking a little bit more about the advanced PFC, um, oh, and the PFC and the efficiency as as it relates to uh, a power protection device and a filtering uh, and conditioning device like a Furman um, Electricity. That's what I was referring to. Oh, sorry, I did. I heard, you said PFC, and I thought you said DSP. Sorry. No, I, I, um, I, yeah, it's a no. It's not a uh, yeah. It's you still would want some kind of AC line protection. You know, especially if you're in an area that's that's subject to wide, you know, brownouts, blackouts, power spikes, those kind of things. Um, Charge where your territory is. Yes, I should point out that um, our power supply is very robust. It will it will work anywhere from I think it's 77 volts up to 260 something volts. So and it will automatically adjust. So if you do have some voltage swings. Um, the amplifier can handle that, and, it, and as the power supply adjusts, it's inaudible from the output stage. So your program material will just continue to play. You won't be, you won't notice anything if the if the if the power supply has to adjust itself based on uh, incoming AC anomalies. Okay. Um, last slide before I go into the demo. So we do call it a Connect series for a reason. Um, there are three easy ways to connect to the amp. Uh, the most common way we see right now is wired mode. So the amplifier will live in an installation, maybe with a small network switch. You can plug your uh, amps into that same network, plug your laptop into that network, and, uh, and then you can gain access to control and configure the amp that way. Um, the amplifier also can wi wi wirelessly connect to a network. So you go into software and you enter a hotspot name or an SSID name and a password. The amp will then seek out that network and wirelessly connect to it. And then with, when you're connected to that same network with a device, whether it be your phone, uh, a, a, you know, a tablet or a computer of some kind, then you'll, have, you'll be able to gain access to the amp to configure and control it wirelessly. Uh, and then the third is an access point. Third way to connect is access point. So if you don't have a network, no problem. Um, every product that we make ships with an access point built into it. So all you do is a button on the back of the amp, you push that button, it'll toggle the access point on. The access point name or SSID name will be displayed on the front panel and then you just um, you log into that like you would any other hotspot with your phone or laptop or whatever. And once you're connected to the amp, that way you can configure and control it. That's really great for a simple installation like that restaurant installation I described. You may have one amp on site, technician goes out, engages access point mode, and they can set the gain, turn on or off the DSP, um, turn on load monitoring capability if you want that. All those features can be easily set. And then once you're done, you can password protect the amp. You can completely defeat the access point so nobody else can turn it on. You can password protect that. And now the amp is secure. It's configured the way you want it to be, and nobody can mess with the settings. There's no knobs on the knobs on the front panel or anything that they could do to change anything around. Okay, so let me um, let me pause that for a second. Um, so here on my screen, you can see I have um, a. I'm gonna I'm gonna bring up uh, AV Exports website. Okay, so you can see here on the, my left-hand side, I've got uh, the LEA website on one browser window, and I have the AV export website on the right side. Um, here on my desk, you, unless you're having my <laughs> let the video blown up really big, 
Um, I have a CS352. It's a 350 watt by two channel amp. And then I have a um, I have my phone, my iPhone plugged into the back of it, just playing some music, just so you can see the metering as I go through the demo. Uh, my amp is network connected on the same network here at LEA headquarters. I'm on that same network. And now all I do is just simply a matter of typing in the IP address in my browser. The IP address of the amp is always displayed on the front panel. In my case, it's 10.8.3.234. And then once you type in the IP address, I'll make my screen a little bigger now. Um, you can see this is what the amplifiers look like in software, this right pane here. Um, the amplifier sitting on my desk is named JAWS. It's sitting right here at the top. But we use a discovery system, so all the other amplifiers that are on a network at any given time, they'll find each other. And so these are all the amps that are online in our building today. Various engineering test amps, um, you know, service amps that might have come back, anything that's online in our building, um, they are online. So you can see there's maybe, what, 10, 15 amps online here right now at the moment. But for the purposes of this demo, we're going to here talk to JAWS. So when you click anywhere on the amp itself in software, it opens up the channel count. Now you can see I have my two channels, channel one and channel two. You can see the metering. Um, and then there's these icons that appear across the top of the screen. If you do this on your phone, the look and feel of the software is the same. The navigation is a little different, you know, because the phone's, you know, obviously a different size. But it all works the same way. So this is the input router. You can route any input to any output. If I had Dante enabled network card here, you'd see all the Dante inputs, all eight channels of Dante that you can route around inside the, to whatever output you want. Um, this is also the screen where you set the gain. You can grab this little fader here and turn it up and down. It turn, it's very responsive. You got these bump up or bump down arrows and anywhere in our software where you see a value, you can hand enter. So if you know you want minus 10 dB gain, you can type it in and it'll set it for you. It's all very easy. There's a couple of override modes too, I'll just touch on briefly. Um, one override mode gives you sort of a paging ducker uh, uh, or an emergency evac feature. So if you have a secondary input to signal sense override turned on, and I had an input assigned here, I got nothing assigned to it right now, then when the amp senses signal coming in on that, on that input, it would automatically mute down the primary and play that emergency evac message or a page in the restaurant uh, we had somebody in a residential installation have the Alexa response tied into that secondary input, so you could hear Alexa response through the main uh, house system. So that's all configured here on this screen. Um, then the next icon over, this little gear icon, this is where you tell the amp what kind of load you want it to drive. So I have, this is your, gives you your options are low Z, 70 volt distributed and for our friends in Europe and elsewhere 100 volt distributed loads so we are capable of driving all those loads um, and then this is also where you can see that smart power bridge so I can turn you only get one channel but this is a 350 watt by two channel amp if I engage smart power bridge on channel one now I have 700 watts available here on channel one, and I still have 350 watts available here on channel two. I, I got bridge power, but I didn't have to sacrifice that channel and make this a mono amp. That's the beauty of it. It's a problem solver. It allows you to do things in an installation to save your client money. You may not have to buy another amplifier. Um, it's a very, very popular feature, and, a, and it solves problems for you, just making the amp more adaptable. Um, there is an on onboard signal generator board, just a handy tool for integrators. You can send white noise, pink noise, or a steady tone um, down the speaker line for testing purposes. And then you get into the DSP section. So you start with the crossovers. Um, we have, uh, these are all, by the way, 96 kilohertz processing, so low, low latency, high quality filters, up to 48 dB per octave on the crossovers, and you have all the popular flavors, Butterworth, Linkwitz, Riley, Bessel. Um, there's also 100 milliseconds of delay, just in case you might need that, it's here. Um, so, and then at the very bottom here, you see we have this speaker tuning library with this import and export button. So if I click on import and choose file, I can go out to speaker tunings, 
And you can see we've got several manufacturers here. There's actually more than this. If you go to leaprofessional.com, our website, and in the resources tab in the download section, um, you'll find all the manufacturers that are available to download. We have, I think, more than 1,400 different models, I think over 20 now different manufacturers. So whatever their DSP secret sauce is that makes their speaker sound the way it should, um, you can uh, you can go out and find that and download that into the amp. Um, I'll just select Sonance commercial here. Um, here's the uh, landscape series. Um, here's a 70 volt landscape speaker and I, I'll click uh, import. And now um, within seconds, the DSP architecture, all the tuning files for that particular model are loaded into this channel. Um, you can see the output changed to a, the name of that Sonant speaker model, it's right here. Um, you have a high pass and a low pass filter that's been set, all set automatically as soon as I downloaded that file. If you go to the parametric EQ section, you can see there's no parametric EQs engaged. So this particular speaker, the manufacturer doesn't require any additional parametric EQ. It sounds good, just like it is. Um, and then at the very end of the signal path, you can see there's an RMS and peak limiter that's been set, again, to provide speaker protection for that particular model. So that's how easy it is to import a speaker tuning file. You go download the, the file that you want and you click import and, and within seconds, it's all set for you. And then you can also export tunings as well. So let's say you have a particular installation uh, or a particular speaker that you have your own special EQ that you like with that particular setting, you can save that as a JSON file and export it and then re-download that to save you time into other amps or uh, or other other uh, channels as you see fit. So again, lots, and then once you have the speaker tuning set, you have other DSP horsepower in here. So if you decide you wanna do a little bit of room equalization, or something like that, that's all built in. Um, okay, and then uh, at the very end of the signal path, you have a load monitor. Um, and so there's two load monitors in here. The first one is a monitor that's using program content. So we just, we, we know what the output voltage and output current is on the amp at all times. And you all know that if you know output voltage and output current, you can do a simple calculation to calculate impedance. And then we've just run a little algorithm that averages that over time. So we know the amp can, can measure its own impedance that it sees, that it can measure the load. So if I turn this on, you can see immediately my load monitor is saying, I have an open. Well, that stands to reason because I don't have a speaker hooked up to my amp. So of course I have an open. Um, the other interesting thing you might notice, it's going to be small on the screen, but you can see my, my little emoji guy here is now frowny face. So the emojis are there for a reason, besides the fact that we are trying to have some fun. Um, if you see a smiley face emoji, there's no events, no faults. Everything is good. If you see a frowny face emoji like was is the condition here, that's the amp telling you that I'm fine, but there's something going on around me that's not right. In this case, I have a load error. You know, I have an open load. So if your client at restaurant calls you and says, I got no audio in my dining room, you can go and you can go into the event log and you can see here on the 4th of October at this date and time, you have an open load. What, what was going on in your restaurant at that time? Was the HVAC guy in there? Did he cut a wire? You know, there's, there's it just give you a nice diagnostic tool. As soon as I correct the issue, so if I turn my load monitor off, you can see I go back to happy here again. Everything's good. Um, the other emoji face that you might see, there's one example of it here. See the shouting face? Um, that's indicative of a fault. That's a fault condition. So that's the amp's way of telling you I have a problem. There's a fault condition. Um, we have more than 50 different fault conditions we measure. Uh, could be a bad fan. The amp's thermally protected itself. Something did indeed in fact fail. Um, the amp would tell you that and register that in a fault log so we can diagnose what actually happened. Scott, um, give the number we're connected to the network. And if I remember right, we're using Amazon Web Services and we're able to, to have access to that on a global level. If we've got a fault 
failure with the amplifier itself, or even uh, you know the frowny face that there's something else that's going on, is there a notification that get, can that can get sent out? It does not automatically send you a notification. If you go into that event register, you you can email it to yourself. It gives you the option to email the events. There's not an automatic notification. Um, if you do have the AMP connected to the cloud, you can be sitting at home and see this. We, we will have, in a future software revision, the ability to set and select notifications. So if the AMP is in a fall condition or some kind of event condition, it can automatically notify you. We just don't have those features turned on yet. Okay, very good. Uh, okay, speaking of the cloud, so now I'm gonna I'm gonna close this window. Uh, I'm gonna squeeze this over here a little bit. So now um, our the cloud is what makes the amplifier a smart amp. Now when you say cloud, people have different uh, ideas of what that means. You know, it's a, you know it can be confusing. People have different things. It, it's just a it's a server. In this case, Amazon Web Services is, is the server host where data can be stored and retrieved in an instant for any internet connected device. So uh, and we have that functionality built into every product we've ever shipped. It's free, if you don't use it, you're not paying for it. We pay for all the data storage, we pay Amazon, we pay for everything. Um, so there's no cost to it, but if you do decide to use it, it's a really handy feature to have at your disposal. So to set it up, you go to leaprofessional.cloud, Anybody can go there, it's free. I'll go there now, elliotprofessional.cloud. Um, and then you create an email address and a, a website, or email address and a password, and then your cloud account is live. By the way, we have a light mode and a dark mode in our software. I'm gonna turn this side to light mode just so you can contrast the two browser windows more easily. So when you go into the cloud, um, it gives you the ability to create venues or installations in your cloud account. Um, the look and feel of the software is the same, but you can see I have several installations that I've created here, Tiger Shark Zoo, Shark Tooth Dental Center, Shark Bite Bar and Grill, uh, my personal favorite, Bite Me Bakery, apparently they have good cupcakes there. So, but if I'm, uh, let's say I am in uh, Miami and uh, I have, uh, um, I've created a new installation, um, and so I can add that venue to my cloud. See this little plus button here, if I click on it, let's call this uh, Juan Pablo's Bar and Grill. So Juan Pablo now owns a bar and grill in Miami, and I just click add venue, and now you can see here's Juan Pablo's Bar and Grill now. It's added to my list of venues in my cloud account. If I click into that, you can see there's no amps found, because I haven't onboarded any amps yet into this venue. So we have this aptly named add amp button. You click on that. Uh, as I mentioned, we're using Amazon Web Services IoT Core. The first thing it does is it creates this randomly generated token. You copy that, you go back to the local connection. I didn't take time to go through all this, but if you go to this information icon here at the top of this menu, it says connect amp to account. Um, you just simply paste in that token that you registered and you click register, that you copied and you click register. And that's all it takes. And this is just Amazon's way of validating that there is a quote unquote IoT device. In this case, it's an LEA amplifier that's out there in the universe somewhere. And it's validating that there's a real device and it's then going to, once it validates it, it's going to connect it to your cloud account. That process can take anywhere from 10 seconds to 30 seconds, depending on your internet connection speed. But we're using Amazon Web Services IoT Core for a reason. Um, it is one of the most universally acceptable, accepted cloud platforms in the world. Um, Amazon has more than 100 server farms all around the world, including several in Latin America, Europe, Asia, all over the United States. So no matter where you are in the world, if you have an internet connection, you're gonna have a quick and easy access to your cloud account. So now you can see JAWS is now showing up here at Juan Pablo's Bar and Grill. Um, if I click on this little lock icon on my browser window, you can see um, I have a secure connection with a valid certificate issued by Amazon. It's This device is secure. It's all 256-bit encryption. Nobody's hacking into it. 
So now if uh, now where's where it gets really cool. When I click in this amplifier in the cloud, literally everything I showed you that you have access to locally, you now have access to remotely. It's full two-way communication. So if Juan Pablo calls me up on the weekend and said, hey, I got no audio in my dining room, you know, I've got I'm expecting a big crowd, something's you know wrong here, I can go back and I can look at that event register or default register. And I can see here on the 4th of October, there was an open load error that was registered. What happened? Juan Pablo, was there somebody doing maintenance work inside the restaurant? Looks like the speaker's no longer connected, speaker line's no longer connected. So just a very powerful tool that gives you some remote diagnostics. Um, if Juan Pablo doesn't pay his bill, I can be sitting at home on my couch and be upset, and I can just simply mute him in the cloud, and now you can see immediately he's muted locally. There's no audio playing in Juan Pablo's bar and grill. Likewise, if I unmute locally, it pushes back to the cloud. And so everything is full two-way communication. This is not just the way you traditionally think about a server. This is just a place where you're storing data. This is full, active, real-time two-way communication. And as I mentioned, it's 100% free. If you decide not to use it, no big deal. But it is a very handy tool. Uh, we use it all the time. There's literally thousands and thousands of installations now <clears throat> that are cloud connected, LEA installations. Um, and so people are active. Marriott is an example. Um, we have hundreds of Marriott locations now, and, and they are very uh, good about connecting those amps to the cloud. I'm just, so whoever's doing those installations now can look at all those Marriott's and if there's a problem they can they can diagnose without ever having to visit a job site. So that is uh, the power of it. Okay, um, I didn't take time to go through some of these uh, buttons on the home screen. We do have an auto standby feature. Um, it's, uh, if, if you uh, use that, you can set the threshold at which the amp will wake up and you can set the wet time, the, the wait time at which the amp will go to sleep when it sees no signal. Um, that's all included in here. Um, there's a network settings menu that allows you to do a manage switch type configuration. Um, green power menu, <clears throat> uh, a lot, a host of other features. I won't take the time today to do that. Okay, so I'm going to, um, I'd like to share just a couple more slides with you. Um, so switching back to PowerPoint um, and just share just a couple more details. So <clears throat> we do have a number of third-party control modules. <clears throat> um, I'm happy to say that Savant is now added to this list. So you can download a control module with Savant if you're using that, along with many of these other popular control platforms. So if you need to um, have the LEA amp on those networks to be controlled via a, a touchscreen or whatever the case may be, you can use those modules to control our product. We do have the APIs written. We also make publicly available our TCP ASCII strings and WebSocket commands. So if you have someone that's code savvy, um, they can write their own code to make the amp. We, we have, our documentation is stellar on this. Again, you can go to our website and download it, and you can have all of our code. It's there for the taking, if anybody would like it. Um, lots of uh, speaker tuning process. This is, uh, we Klipsch is now added to this list. That's not on here. There's been a couple of new ones. We're adding them all the time. As soon as we get a request, we add them, as long as the manufacturer is willing to share their files with us. And we have many more in process. Um, <clears throat> So this is, I'm not gonna take time to go through, this is a, a simple uh, cross-reference guide. Um, obviously, the point of this slide is to tell you that we win, LEA is better. You would not expect me to say anything different than that, and I do believe it. We do make a better product than our competition, but we also make it competitively priced. Um, I don't sell my product on price. Um, I don't come out and say, hey, you guys should buy an LEA amp because we're the cheapest. I don't say that but you're not gonna be disadvantaged on price, especially when you consider all of the extra features that we give you for free. Uh, and if you add the cloud on top of it, that's just a bonus. You know, it's just a tool that you have at your disposal that doesn't cost you anything. Um, we are, uh, then the last thing I'll say is that we are a green conscious company, something we call the LEA way. Um, if somebody asks us for our sustainability statement, I send them this slide. We are uh, uh, 
taking care to make sure our product, we use a 100% recyclable box. We have the standby feature. We work in a uh, LEED certified building. A lot of our partners are vetted the same way. So um, we do have a pretty strong sustainability statement as well. Um, and the last thing about the LEA way I will say is we just like to have fun. You know, we, we, uh, we started the company, it's been hard work. We launched it in the middle of COVID. Our product started shipping one month before the whole world shut down. But we've had a really good time um, uh, building our brand and uh, and building our relationships, building our network of dealers and distribution partners, and we have been growing rapidly. We we we, we excelled past the startup phase very quickly, and now we, as I mentioned, you know we're making money. We put all the money we have back into our company so that we can continue to grow and build some great products. We do have a really strong roadmap as well. So we're investing in the future roadmap as well as operational efficiencies. So that's that's all I, I wanted to stop there. I try to be done in 45 minutes. Um, if I said I'm getting bored, I, I bring out my secret weapon, my uh, my sharp squirt gun, which I stole from my grandson. He doesn't know I have it, but I did. I can't see anybody, so I don't know if anybody went to sleep. But I don't. So maybe I didn't have to use that. So you so should what, you should see uh, JP and myself now. Uh, we've got our, our cameras back on. I, but yep. See you guys, and uh, now let me know what questions you have or whatever I need to go back. And I kind of went kind of fast, so maybe I should uh, pause and let's see, let anybody ask any questions. No, I mean there there were a couple of questions that came in, and but you answered them, or I knew that you were going to be answering them along the way, so that's why I didn't interrupt. Um, all, okay. Always a a great presentation. Um, it, we have a few minutes now, obviously, so if anybody does have a lingering question that you do need to ask, feel free to do so. Um, JP, was there anything that you wanted to add? No, just uh, remember, folks, that we're doing this on Spanish on Thursday. So if anyone wants to bring up technicians or something, we're going to be here as well in Spanish. Yeah, so we're, we're really ecstatic about the partnership that uh, we've got now with uh, Elia. And we're ecstatic, man. We, we've got... We've got imps in the barn already, so people need amplifiers. We we've, we've got them. They're in house. We've got price sheets ready to go, and uh, and a very knowledgeable sales team who would be behind me and myself that um, are are available for for any assistance required. We I should point out we we are shipping. Um, we have we're 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 aggressive in terms of our supply chain. And our manufacturing philosophy. So we we're, we're working very very hard to make sure we're continuing to supply product. As I mentioned, we're shipping in the range of 600 amps a week. It's not enough, uh, but so new orders to us take anywhere on average eight to nine weeks. But because we are getting product every week, we can generally solve emergencies. So if somebody says, ah, I got to have an amp, you know. Then we will we do our best to try to solve that. But if we ship first in, first out, it's about eight week lead time. And we're keeping stock here in Miami. So as as people have the need, we've already received our 354s and our 352s. We're just waiting on the 7, uh, 704 and 702s. Um, and I think we've got the 354D in stock as well. So if somebody has an urgent need for anything in Don Day. So we're we're also keeping inventory right. um, for our customers. I can't say enough about uh, how much we appreciate a audio video export as a partner um, very happy to be aligned with them and also our friends at Polaris controls our rep firm They're, those guys are all very technical um, they're spread out all over the region so they're accessible and uh, they've just been a huge help to us you know helping helping us get the word out there and, and supporting our efforts in, in in region so very happy awesome well no questions have come in so that means either everybody's lost or you did an amazing job I'm gonna believe that you did an amazing job I hope Thank you guys so much for, again, if there are any questions, Nick, <clears throat> it was. Up.